Thank you, Monica. Uh, Professor Madiasmo, Professor Lindawati Ghani, Ms. Rosita Ulisinaga, IAI Council members, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum and salamat sore to all of you in Indonesia. It is a real pleasure to be joining you today, although not able to be with you in Jakarta, but at least with the technology, I'm able to be present. I would like to congratulate the Institute of Indonesia Chartered Accountants for arranging this event and the two month celebration, the Aspiring Professional Accountants Festival 2020, also known as APA Fest, which you bring together thought leaders, academics, and various dignitaries from the accountancy and finance professions to encourage, nurture, and celebrate current students of the professional accountancy and those who are just starting out in their careers. Even in these times of a global pandemic and economic uncertainty, it is a testament to IAI as an institution that you have kept the focus, training and enhancing the growth and potential of students and young professionals, levering, leveraging technology to reach out to students and young professionals from all over Indonesia. I have visited Jakarta on three occasions during my time at Unilever. And during every visit, I was always impressed with the dynamism and energy of your country. What has been achieved in terms of economic development over the past two decades has been truly remarkable. IFAC, through its network of member PAOs and other partner organizations, is the voice of the professional accountancy organization. We represent more than 3 million professional accountants. And as has been said by your president, IAR has been a founding member of IFAC since 1977. I would also like to recognize past and present volunteers from IAI who have served on the various IFAC committees and boards. In recent years, we've had the pleasure of the following distinguished individuals from IAI. Professor Siddhartha Utama, who served on the International Accounting Education Service Board. Professor Linda Watigani, who is currently serving on the membership committee of IFAC. And Mr. Madi Hadibroto, who was on the IFAC board when I joined IFAC in 2015 and has done so much for our global profession. I would also like to mention IFAC's relationship with the ASEAN Federation of Accountants, an IFAC network partner. AFA is hosted by IAA in Jakarta and works closely on behalf of the profession in the ASEAN region. I think it is important for you as young and aspiring accountants to be aware of some of the key themes that are important today and for the future. And I will indeed begin with ethics in the profession. Our commitment to ethics as part of our public interest mandate really does distinguish our profession from all others. And it guides us as we navigate current and emerging issues. I would like to turn to the International Code of Ethics for Professional Accountants, which lays out five principles for accountants to abide by. Integrity, objectivity, confidentiality, professional competence and due care, and above all, professional behavior. Our collective fight, our collective action to fight fraud and corruption must be a joint goal of governments, businesses, and civil society. And our profession clearly has an important role to play that includes increasing transparency, committing to whistleblower protection, and creating formal mechanisms to fight financial crime, money laundering, bribery, and data breaches. Citizens, above all, should see professional accountants as leaders in this fight, demonstrating that we take our public interest mandate extremely seriously. Like ethics, the integrity and professionalism of accountants in the public sector is and will continue to be vital. In many countries, the public sector is not only the largest employer, but it's also the largest investor. The integrity of public financial management has always been essential to the profession's public interest mandate. But our work in the public sector is now more important than ever. The measures taken to prevent the spread of COVID-19 and to minimize the damage suffered by industry and working people have amounted to trillions of dollars worldwide. And these support systems and schemes are making the difference between bankruptcy and solvency for countless people and organizations. 
So delivering on these public measures in response to COVID-19 requires transparent decision-making based on high quality financial information with it which we risk inefficiencies and waste, enabling fraud and corruption that undermines the public interest. And as we know, sadly, those affected by failures of the public sector to fight fraud and corruption are the poorest in society. Those same citizens who are impacted most by the COVID-19 pandemic. So when public services fail, society suffers and ordinary people have the most to lose. But when our professional accountants work in the public sector, they work for those who need most our support. I will now focus on technology and how this is becoming a very important priority in our profession as the world changes very quickly. Digitalization is the present and the future of our profession. At IFAC, we're witnessing many trends arising and COVID-19 has accelerated digitalization in ways that few have predicted and your president has just talked about that. But I will focus on why you as accountants should value technology. And you will no doubt hear more about how technology impacts the way you work and how it will impact your professional development in the future. You should be familiar with some of these important elements of technology, artificial intelligence, blockchain, cybersecurity, and data. And technology is everywhere. It is in our hands. It, in, it is in our homes. And today it is right in front of us. COVID-19 has restricted me from being with you live today, but technology has enabled me to be with you in a different way. Technology will help us learn it will help us engage with our peers and colleagues. Technology will help you embrace and enhance your professional experience, and it will help you seek out solutions to the challenges you will encounter. So as, in, so as you embark on your careers, I challenge you to think about how technology will help you going forward. And I encourage you to maintain awareness of how advances in technology will support you in your day-to-day -day jobs and how it will make those jobs much easier to conduct in the future. Lastly, on this point, at IFAC, there's a focus on how we can partner with our members, such as IAI, to advance different initiatives around technology to help professional accountancy organizations meet the needs of it, their members and the profession that we all serve. Over the past four months, the headlines across the world have been on COVID-19. But we must not lose sight of the, global, the other global pandemic that we have been facing for many decades, and that is the issue of climate change. And of course, Indonesia as an archipelago understands this better than most. Across the world, hundreds of millions of people are already being impacted negatively from the effects of damage to the planet. For example, over 5 million people around the world die every year from the effects of air pollution. That compares with around 1.2 million who have sadly so far passed away from COVID-19. And over 9 million people die every year of the related impact of climate change. So COVID has highlighted the fragility of our global ecosystem and the urgent importance of cre creating a more sustainable world. Clearly, globalization and industrialization have benefited society, but they've also contributed obstacles to sustainable development, including extreme poverty and inequality. Our profession with its global reach has always endeavored to serve the public interest, by, guided by our strong ethical standards and professionalism. IFAC's strategy is also guided by and aligned with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. I believe in this vision of our future that we need to be clear about how we must evolve and where we can add value as a profession. To you as young and aspiring professional accountants, my key message to you is to keep agile and keep learning. When I speak to other audiences, I always ask, how do we attract the next generation to our profession? Our profession that is evolving to new skills, opportunities and careers that we see young people searching for. Accountancy programs and education are being revolutionized to be modern, agile, and effective, and using digital education to make sure that either virtually or in person, 
you can keep studying and working with all of your peers, teachers and organizations over the, around the world. Young and aspiring professional accountants want to, want to learn new skills, such as change management and the ability to integrate with other professions. And accountants are preparing to become professionals with new types of roles, technology integrators, dynamic decision makers, storytellers, and sustainability advocates. These are roles that position us to respond to massive changes in business, technology, and society. When professional accountants talk about our future, we must talk about climate change. We must find ways to work in the public interest against these existential threats that affect everyone everywhere. And when Greta Thunberg presented her views to the United Nations Secretary General, she said that she was just one of millions who passionately believe in taking climate action. And I'm sure that is the case with all of you in Indonesia. Our profession is important to her and your aspirations. You have wonderful institutions in the IAI as your source for continuous learning. And I commend IAI for using its digital platform to inform and educate its members and students, especially during this pandemic. And I ask you to check out IFAC's dedicated COVID-19 resource page and our Global Knowledge Gateway. In these two areas, we collect and collaborate with all facets of the profession and the development industry to create thought leadership and guidance on all relevant matters. These resources have an outstanding breadth and depth of information. You will have access to webinars, learn how different countries are adapting to the new challenges faced by our profession, and you will see examples of how the profession is using its agility to adapt. I really recognize how fortunate some of us are to be able to be able to participate in today's event. And of course, my thoughts go out to all of those families that have lost loved ones prematurely. And of course, to those that are still suffering from the effects of this terrible pandemic. And there is no question that the heroes of today and tomorrow are the doctors, the nurses, the healthcare workers, researchers and scientists, everyone who is keep working so hard to save our lives and protect us. And we owe them an enormous debt of gratitude, a debt that we may never ever able to fully repay. But I am convinced that our global profession has never had such an important role as now to support society in tackling global challenges and helping governments and businesses navigate the path to recovery. Our professional competences, a collection of technical knowledge and abilities, combined with our interpersonal skills, all underpinned by our ethical behaviors, are extremely relevant at this time. We need to continue to focus in earnest on the work that we do, which will be equally important when we get to, others, to the other side of this terrible pandemic. When, when governments need the mechanisms to provide financial support to public health systems, when economies start to recover, when businesses need cash flow to rebuild, we have to be there as partners and problem solvers with them. Again, I would like to thank IAI for giving me this opportunity to address you today, and I really do look forward to our discussion. So over to you, Rinaldi Pamana, the APA champ of 2018, and may I congratulate you on winning the APA award. Tere Makassi, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Allen, for your keynote speech. Terima kasih, um, Pak Alan. Terima kasih juga, Pak Alan. Without further ado, let us start the discussion. And Renaldi, over to you. Thank you, Kamonika. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome. I'm Renaldi, and today for this special session, we'll be having a very special session uh, guided with our two honorable speakers, our Rosita Ulisinaga and Mr. Alan Johnson. Now, this discussion focuses on the theme of accounting profession in both the current situation as well as how the profession prepares young accountants of the generation to prove themselves ready for the future. And besides that, we'd also like to gain further insights from IFAC's perspective regarding the roles of accountants 
both young and mature in facing the future. For this discussion, first of all, we'd like to turn our attention to Burosita Olisinaga. Burosita, how are you? We hope that you're doing well. How are you dealing with the pandemic? Uh, thank you, Rinaldi. Before I respond to your question, I want to greet everybody here. Uh, Mardiasmo, uh, Alan Johnson, it is honor to having you here. And also Prof. Professor Linda Watigani. Uh, I also see Ibu Tia Adityasi. And also I saw Pak Ahmadi Hadi Broto and Pak Hans Katika Hadi. Both of them are very senior accountant, respective senior accountant, and very active uh, in Indonesia accountant of uh, in, in Indonesia charter accountant. So, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Renaldi, I think this is very interesting uh, situation. Uh, do you know that I have been working from home since March? So, I actively working, but stay at home. So, I think that's very significant way of working now uh, in my office. But surprisingly, we can uh, do everything from home. So this is very interesting situation, which we never think that we can do it, right? So I think we are pressure to change. And this is the situation, but we believe we can do it. And now you can see that even Fest is fully uh, conducted virtually and it still can go on right so this is the the, the word that we are dealing with change uh, the, the change is a uh, is now is part of our life i think that's my response to your question Renaldi. thank you Burosita. it's a relief for us to hear that from you and we also do hope that everyone watching the APA Fest right now is also keeping themselves distant and keeping themselves and their families healthy and without further ado, Burosita, maybe we'd like to continue with our discussion. We'd like to ask you a few questions. First of all, how do you think the accounting students and young accountants can play a role in promoting the importance of ethics in our profession? Let me repeat again the question. Mm -hmm. How do you think accounting students and young accountants can play a role in promoting the importance of ethics in our profession. Okay, thank you, Renaldi. I think ethical codes are very important. It is a fundamental principle for accounting professional to enhance their profession and maintain public trust and demonstrate honesty and fairness. And IAI has issued uh, a revised professional code of ethics, which must be adhered by each of its member to ensure it's, uh, they are do it integrity, professionalism, and it can always properly maintained by each member. So Indonesia has, has more than 250,000 accounting students. And I believe at least 30,000 accounting graduates every year. So to build a good career, as well as build a strong profession, Indonesia accounting student from the start must uphold these principles, the ethics principles and belief, and start building track records starting from now. So II APAFES is a very good platform to start engaging with the profession from an early age. And they can see the development of the profession from firsthand and engaging with successful professional figures like Pak Martiasmo and Alan Johnson, and see the pathway they built, how they become a successful uh, professional accountant. So uh, for all of you, you can start to promote the importance of ethics for our profession through actively participate in II activities and start introducing and promoting how to become professional accountant to your friends through your various social media. Now, younger generation is very active in social media. It's very easy to promote something, right? So at least you can start now. If most students are aware about how to become professional accountant, not only 
accounting graduates but become professional accountant, we can expect brighter future for our accounting profession in Indonesia. I think that's my response, Renaldi. Thank you very much, Burosita. And I do very well agree with you that in order to become professional accountants, I believe that participating in this EIE APA event, as I myself have experienced, has also definitely prepared me and a lot of my colleagues to be able to prepare ourselves for becoming a more professional accounting profession accountants. Now, moving on, Rosita, as we are well aware with the current situation that we're dealing, the COVID-19 pandemic, mm -hmm. I'd like to ask, what has the profession done to contribute to the collective efforts in dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic impact? And what do you think the role of the accounting profession is going to be in the, the post-pandemic world? Let me repeat the question again. What has the profession done to contribute to the collective efforts in dealing with the impact of COVID-19? And what do you think the role of the profession will be in post-pandemic world? Okay, so a bit, in principle, our profession uh, must join the efforts in restoring the economy back to normal through persistent enhancement of the relevance and transparency of the financial reporting for decision maker and key stakeholders, because at least our that's that's our core responsibility, right? And II has a, a the biggest prof accounting professional organization has released a public statement regarding the importance of disclosure related to COVID nineteen, particularly forward looking disclosures for investors. And II, together with with key stakeholders of the accountancy profession in Indonesia is closely monitoring the coronavirus pandemic and its consequences to individual members and organization. One important role mandated to the II is standard setting for financial reporting and responding to stakeholders' inquiries and to provide clarification to uncertainties relating to COVID-19 and its effect to financial reporting Different organizations, including the ISB, has issued clarification and guidance for implementation of standard under current circumstances. And Indonesian Financial Accounting Standard Board, II, has issued several guidance also to assist our stakeholders in Indonesia in preparing their 2020 financial report due to COVID-19 situation. So the topic are related to events after reporting period based on PSAC 8 and expected credit losses based on PSAC 71 and also about fair value measurement based on PSAC 68. So we will commit it. I, I will continue to monitor the development of the COVID-19 situation and will collaborate with all relevant stakeholders to be part of the solution. That's my Thank response. You, Thank you, thank you very much. So as I may conclude that both EIE and IFRS Foundation has definitely contributed in overcoming the challenges with the current pandemic situation. Now, we would like to move our attention to Mr. Alan Johnson. Mr. Johnson, we hope that you are safe and well with your families. And for this next question, we'd like to ask to you regarding do you consider that with the current pandemic, we have more, even more reliance on technology? Do you consider technology now as a bane or boon to the future of our profession? And how can the current and next generation of accountants translate their technological advancement, or as we may say, savviness, into the into an advantage in competing with other professions? If I may repeat the question again, do you consider the technology more as a bane or boon for the future in our profession? And how can the current and next generation use or take advantage of the technology in competing with the other professions? Thank you, Rinaldi. Good afternoon. Um, and just to say, I'm and my family are keeping very well. Thank you. And I hope the same with all of you. Um, I think one of the biggest challenges is not only staying safe, but also staying sane at the moment. 
given this situation we've been living for for almost eight months. Um, so uh, in response to your question, um, I would say that technology is, is definitely a boon uh, to all of us uh, um, and the future of our profession. Um, and it's, it's, you know, we see it today. We're all together um, being able to connect in real time, uh, talking about relevant topics, using technology, which probably a year ago, 18 months ago, we would never have imagined would be possible. And in fact, if somebody had said to me nine months ago that we'll be holding this kind of event uh, virtually, I would have said, you must be crazy. It must surely be better that we're all together because it, there's more to learn from each other uh, by being together and sharing the time together. But obviously the, the pandemic has resulted in us doing so. So as they say, uh, necessity is the mother of invention and therefore we're now able to use the technology and, and actually most of us feel pretty okay with it um i'm not su i'm not suggesting this will be the only way uh, to connect with each other in, in the future i don't think it can be but for now it's the best we've got so therefore it's definitely a boon i guess it could be a bane if you don't embrace it and don't feel comfortable with it but particularly for the generation I'm, I'm talking to today, I think you, I mean, when I think about your generation, you've been using technology in your lives, uh, not necessarily 24 hours a day, but certainly many, many hours of the day. Um, and it comes as almost second nature to you, which would be very different to when I was at this stage in, in, uh, in my, at this stage in my, in my life going back. Um, clearly in a post pandemic world, um, we, we're going to have to use technology to do the things that we need to do as professional accountants in an efficient way. I mean, when I think about, say, those who are in the audit part of our profession, clearly their work is much more challenging now because they can't necessarily visit the clients and see what's going on. And as we know, audit comes from Latin audire, which means to listen, and it's very difficult uh, if you're not present to hear what people are saying and see what people are doing. But, you know, the, the um, new technology that's available now, I mean, I was speaking to a, a, a country managing partner of one of the big four uh, last week, telling me about the use of um, um, robotics uh, to help assess uh, valuations, uh, using drones to actually look at whether assets actually exist not necessarily can they do stock taking but they can at least attest as to whether the the buildings and the assets are actually where the company says they are so you know i think going forward if we can embrace technology and feel comfortable with with it then it will actually make our jobs much easier to do and probably we can do a better job now there comes with this sort of some ethical dilemmas of course there's you know issues around data integrity, data security, et cetera, that we need to think about uh, as we embrace the technology. But I, I think these are things that we can indeed overcome. Um, and I think it gives us the, the advantage as professional accountants that with the technology, we can actually do our jobs even better um, in a very important time when um, the independent assurance that we provide either as auditors or indeed as professional accountants in business and the public sector, a lot of what we do is bringing that critical judgment to the table, critical challenge, um, and adding value to the discussions around the board table. So I would say we should embrace technology. We shouldn't fear it. There will be some issues and challenges, of course, as I said, around uh, the ethical dimension, but these are things which we should uh, be able to overcome. Thank you, Mr. Alan Johnson, for your statements. And I do agree with you is that uh, because of this pandemic, it definitely connects us when we're even be able to do this event virtually. As people say that we're apart, but we're still together. together. Um, referring to your keynote speech previously with the continuous advancement of technology, we'd like to ask you how the role of accountants are going to be, for example, in this 
uh, or in the future of the age of automation, big data, and artificial intelligence. You previously mentioned that accountants are preparing for themselves to become technology integrators or storytellers and sustainability advocates. Can you explain further regarding to those things? Yes, well, first of all, let me you know, talk about the technologies. I, as you said, I mentioned big data, artificial intelligence, et cetera. Uh, for me, I see this actually as giving us the opportunity to add even more value in the roles that we perform. I know a lot of people are concerned about the technology and you hear people say, well, they're going to take jobs away from us. Well, actually, I think it will. this will allow us to do different things, uh, do what we do better, do what we do differently and add much more value. If I, I mean, I'll take artificial intelligence. When I was, you know, 30 odd years ago, sort of maybe even longer in your position, Rinaldi, um, I, I didn't have access to, to big data. My job was to, as a professional accountant in business, was to advise uh, my, my, my colleagues on the right strategies, how to go about setting up businesses, how to engage with customers, consumers, et cetera, how to engage in the supply chain backwards with our suppliers, manufacturers, et cetera. But I didn't have access to the intelligence I needed to draw out some relevant um, insights that I could bring to the table. So did I do, I did a good job, I suspect, but could I have done it better if I'd had access to artificial intelligence and big data? Yes. So actually, I think our role um, as a, as a critical advisor to our business partners, um, drawing on data, distilling it into key insights that we can bring to the company. For example, you know, as professional accountants, we just don't talk about the numbers. We should talk about trends. We should talk about what our competitors are doing. We should talk about what, what is going on um, throughout our supply chain, upstream, downstream. What does it mean? How should we configure our manufacturing? How should we configure our logistics? All of those things are what professional accountants. And I just want to just say, you know, Rosita uh, uh, said something, and she, uh, she was absolutely right. She used the word professional. For me, it's about the professionalism of accountants. So we are professional accountants. We're not accountants. We're professional accountants. And therefore, that's why I think we add so much value in the roles that we play. So, you know, I, I, I do believe that this is, should not be seen as a threat. This should be seen as an opportunity for us to add even more value and be even more relevant in the organizations in which we work, whether that's in the audit and assurance profession, whether that's in the public sector, or whether that's in the private sector, or whether it's in, you know, uh, private practice, either in a big four, or, or an SME, and I haven't mentioned SMEs, but I just want to add that SMEs um, are critical to, to sustainable economic development. They are, they are the backbone of, of, of economic growth in your country and in most countries in the world, whether they're you know, highly developed or slightly less developed. And therefore, we as professional accountants can help SMEs um, embrace and utilize um, the technologies to give them uh, access to more information, help them be more agile and perform even better and more competitively. Very well noted, Mr. Johnson. Thank you. And it's relieving to hear that everyone has a part that they can take, whether they are in Big Four or even SMEs, to be able to give an impact. And also, uh, I agree with you that we want to strive as not just accountants, but also professional accountants. Now, regarding to that, uh, as the young generations right now heavily immersed in technology, do you agree that today's young generation are the most informed, connected, and engaged? And how do you think this will impact their expectation of what good leadership is? Well, there's no doubt that um, your generation is much better connected than when I was at the same stage in my career. Um, you, have, you have access, we all do, of course, 
um, to real time information. You, we know what's going on anywhere in the world. So we can preempt what might happen in our own geographies by seeing what's happening around the world, which we could never have done. I mean, I do remember um, it was back in, I think it was the late eighties or maybe early nineties. So before you were born, um, when uh, the US uh, entered um, Iraq, no, or Iran, I think it was Iran. And for the first time, we actually saw a war taking place in real time. If we switched on CNN at the time, we could see the jets taking off and heading to the Middle East. So since then, access to information in real time has become something that we could all have. And therefore, it, what does it do? It, it allows us to understand the trends and what's going on. It allows us to think carefully what they mean. It allows us to learn from what's happening elsewhere and make sure that we are better prepared. Um, you know, if I look back, let's just take the COVID-19. We knew on the, around the 31st of December last year that there was a virus. So therefore, we did have some time, if we chose to use that time well, to actually understand what it might mean, even if we didn't know exactly what the virus was, we could see what was happening and we, could have been, we should have been better prepared for what it would mean for all of us. And of course, your, your country and those that are closer to China were much better prepared because you've lived through you know, these kind of pandemics for a lot longer. So you, you and the sort of ASEAN countries have done a sterling job, I must say, in protecting society. And therefore, you know, this is the value of information, the value of data, and the value of connectedness that we all live in today. So you, the, the question was also about, you know, will it impact the expectation of good leadership? I believe it does. Because now we are a lot clearer about what good and effective leadership is. And by the way, corollary to that is what bad leadership also is, so that we can learn to make sure that we continuously improve what we do as leaders to be better leaders for tomorrow. And as I said, the, the underpinning all of this is access in real time to knowledge and information. The other thing I would say is that technology now allows us to work across borders and boundaries much better than we could do in the past. So if I just think about young professional accountants in Indonesia today, there is no reason why you cannot work virtually for international organizations, whether they are in Indonesia or not in Indonesia, because the technology allows us to, to work remotely and virtually as effectively as if we were living in the same place, in the same country, in the same office. And I think this gives a lot more mobility to our profession because we are really, truly one of the only global professions in the world where our, our professional qualification is what I call a portable qualification. And it has the same value wherever you go in the world. And I heard earlier on about talking about chartered accountancy worldwide. I, it was in Bahasa, so I didn't fully understand it, but I did pick up the word. That's another example where our, our qualification allows us to work either physically or remotely in different locations for different companies. So I think it opens up huge opportunities for the young professionals going forward. Thank you very much, Mr. Johnson. Well, uh, following with that question regarding the young generation of accountants currently, perhaps I'd like to ask Burosita Ulisinaga regarding the current leaders in the profession. How do you think the current leaders in the accounting profession can better promote the profession and inspire both the students to enter the profession as well as the young accountants to continue? with their professional journey and become the next generation of accountancy leaders with keeping technology in mind. Okay, thank you, Renaldi. I think, I think this is very specific for Indonesia based on my observation, yeah. 
because uh, 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 accounting students or accounting graduates in Indonesia, uh, the majority really does not have a very good awareness uh, after they graduate from the bachelor degree, uh, how to become professional accountant. Because most of them, after they graduate, they just go to, to uh, uh, work and they don't know even uh, how to become a professional accountant. So I think this is very important because the accounting profession will face significant changes in the next uh, decades. And professional organization like IAI, their members and also educational institution should really respond uh, to this situation, right? The, these are three areas that must be considered by young accountants in order to develop their accounting profession in the future, right? First, accountant will use increasingly sophisticated and smart technologies, like, like mentioned by Alan, to hence enhance their traditional ways of working. And these technolo technologies might even replace the traditional approach. And the second one, uh, continued globalization will cause significant challenges for the profession. But if we manage that pride, it could also create more opportunities for us, like also uh, mentioned by Alan, right? And the third one, because of these uh, changes, very rapid changes, of course, uh, as a regulator, they will also regulate more strict, right? So increased regulation and the associated disclosure rules will have also the greatest impact on the profession for years to come. So my, 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 my thinking is, therefore, it is very important that the professional organization like II provide a strong platform for accounting student and young accountant to be involved early on with the profession. How, how it uh, can happen. I, 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 I has provided a good platform by allowing accounting student to be young accountant member of II, And through our annual APAFES event, that way the younger generation of accountants can follow the pathway that their predecessor have built because during the upper fest, I think they learned a lot from uh, a successful professional accountant. And also they also got uh, a, a relevant updates about what, what is going on in the accounting profession. We do hope uh, using this kind of platform, uh, this younger generation can be our predecessor or our successor. Thank you, Burosita. And I truly agree with you that both the students, accounting students and young accountants, they need to be constantly reminded of the areas that they need to improve and how they can actively participate in becoming professional accountants. Now, we'd like to step back into the current situation that we're dealing Previously in the keynote speech, we are reminded that not only that we need to address the COVID-19 issue, but we also need to remind ourselves about the climate change. Now, this question is for Mr. Johnson. What is your view of the role of young accountants in joint efforts in with promoting and achieving sustainable development and growth? Thank you, Rinaldi. Um, my starting point is that we all want to leave this world in a better place to the one that we found it. Um, and I, when I talk to young people these days everywhere, when I have the opportunity, um, one thing is very clear. They want to make the world a better place. So in terms of thinking about who they want to work for, the kind of organizations they wish to work with, they want to make sure that those organizations take climate change and um, protecting the planet very seriously. Um, and, you know, you know, I would encourage young professional accountants to really challenge their employers. I know it's not easy. Uh, it's often very difficult and quite risky to do, but we've got to take more risks as individuals to demand change. 
Uh, just to give an idea, when I started my career in Unilever, um, I chose Unilever because I wanted to work for a company that did the right things for society. Um, and that's why I stayed for over 30 years, because it was set up in its founding days to do the right things for society. Um, and I think we should demand this of every organization, whether it's public sector, private sector, large or small. That's what we should be demanding. We should be impatient. We should demand our leaders to embrace um, strategies that will make a difference. It will take time. It can't be done overnight, but we've got to start. So I would say you've got to be the ambassadors to demand change, just as Greta Thunberg has been doing and mobilize millions of young people around the world. It's very impressive what she's achieved. And I am sure there are hundreds of thousands, if not a million st students in Indonesia who also went to campaign to make the world a better place. So, you know, we are privileged because we actually work with many, many functions within our organization. So we have a strong voice. We have credibility because of our ethical background. Therefore, people listen to us. And the thing I would say most of all is please, please, please never put your personal or employer interest above the interests of society. Whatever you do, it must be done to do good for society. And we should always stop and ask ourselves, is what I'm doing going to make the society a better place? And if it is at the expense of that, we shouldn't be doing it and we should be ashamed that we're doing it. So please, please, please um, make sure that we leave, leave the world when we eventually do a better place than the one that we found ourselves in. That's my plea. And I honestly believe that young, the young and the youth today, that's exactly what they want. And I'm really delighted. And I encourage you to continue campaigning strongly to make sure that leaders hear your voices and, and respond appropriately. Thank you very much, Mr. Johnson. Rosita, do you have any additional thoughts on sustainable development growth and how the young accountants can prepare themselves and take action? Yeah, uh, I think my advice uh, for accounting students and young accountants uh, I think first, uh, I think you need to think uh, as entrepreneur. I think this is my, my, my advice to every uh, young accountant because I think uh, it does not mean that you must own your business. It doesn't uh, mean, mean that you have to own your business, but every accountant is in business for themselves, right? So you have to be responsible for your own skill. You have to be responsible for your own growth integrity, reputation, your personal brand, and service to clients and the public. So with this entrepreneur mindset, you will always want to learn new things every day to stay interested and interesting. And you know how to leverage your strength, not only focusing on your weaknesses. And you, you will always be able to convert any threat in a very dynamic circumstances to become new opportunities. That's the mindset to be an entrepreneur, right? So I, I hope with this new mindset as entrepreneur, you can be a leader in whatever you do. Uh, I think that's one of my suggestion in addition to what uh, Alan has mentioned, Rinaldi. Thank you as well, Burosita. If I may summarize that, uh, regarding sustainable development growth. I myself may be representing the millions of Indonesian students. Also, we do hope that we want to be able to do good for society and definitely make the world a better place. And with having an entrepreneur mindset, following also model from Greta Thunberg, we obviously and we definitely would like make the world an even better place, not just for us, but also for the future generations. The time is almost up, but we have one final question. This question is for both Burosita and Mr. Johnson. Perhaps uh, we would like to address Burosita first. Burosita, do you have 
any final advice, particularly to accounting students and aspiring accountants? Okay, after this upper first, what you need to do is join as a member of II. That's the first thing that you need to do, right? So you are exposed to the latest updates on accounting, finance, professional standard, and others. And being a member of the largest professional organization in Indonesia, II is a smart step for you to start your bright career in the future to be one of the global professional accountants. That's number one. So after this upper fest, don't forget, join uh, be a member of II. And I think uh, Alan will also uh, give some advice, but I think uh, advice number two, uh, in addition to be, uh, to think as an entrepreneur, what, what uh, my observation for younger generation, they are very smart. Their technical skills, uh, the technical skills is very good. I think I, I observe one uh, quite big gap uh, Renaldi for younger generation. I think this will, the impact of the communication through gadget, uh, I think every day, I think it reduced the skill to, for the young generation to communicate verbally and also written communication. Because I saw, yeah, uh, when we communicate through gadget, you tend to use a very short, short wording, right? Sometimes uh, five wordings you just condense to two or three uh, words, right? So meaning that kind of habit will reduce your communication skill verbally and in written, right? So uh, based on my observation, that caused a significant gap if you try to build your, your, your career, especially if you are in a higher position, right? So for you, younger generation, younger accountant, while technical skills are very important, I think you need to uh, go beyond your comfort zone, continue to build your verbal communication and written communication skill to expand your uh, network, uh, because now network is, is a very important asset for your career. So this additional uh, verbal and written communication skill will bring you to higher level of your career. I think that's two of my, my, my advice for younger generation. Thank you. Thank you, Bu Rosita. We'll definitely keep in mind that after this session, us as young accountants, especially accounting students being a part of the EIE member and also to practice our verbal and our written skills, not like even more better than how we are used to with the technology. Thank you so yeah. much for your advice. And Mr. Johnson, any final advice for us also? Yes. Yes, thank you. I'm, I, I was smiling when I heard Brazita talking about communication. I have a 20-year-old daughter who's in year three at university. Um, and I have to say, my sentences are this long and her responses are this <laughs> short. Yeah. Um, that's the way of the world. Interesting. But I, I want to pick up actually on what uh, Minister Thohir, your Minister of State-Owned Enterprises, said earlier in his remarks on behalf of the President of the Indonesian Republic. Um, you know, he used some words which I think I used in my own remarks, um, but he used some more. So he used the words transparency, he used the words integrity, he used the words trust, absolutely fundamental to, to our accounting students and aspiring professional accountants going forward. He also used the word adaptive and credibility. Absolutely, we need to be adaptive and we absolutely need to be credible. Um, some other pieces of advice, I would pick up on what Rosita said in the, not the last, this question, but the previous question. Learn, learn, learn. You, you learn continuously throughout your career. The day you stop learning is the day, basically, your career will end. So please remember that it's not just passing exams and getting a good job. Life is about lifelong learning. And finally, I would say, please think about finding yourself some mentors and coaches that can help you on your journey. Um, I'm sure the IAR has a mentoring, I don't know, but uh, it probably has a good mentoring program in place, particularly for more senior members of the profession. Um, 
use that opportunity to 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 learn from people who've been through uh, what you've been through. Let them tell their stories. I I really like the video from the Philippines. People showing you know uh, what they're going through at this point in time. Never be afraid to share your story because. In your story, there will be something that somebody will pick up that will be able to help you uh, come to terms with the situation you find yourself in and give you the confidence to keep going, which was the, the purpose of the Philippines video. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. But a lot of advice that we've gained for us as young accountants and accounting students will definitely take some key pointers in our minds and we'll definitely take them and use them as our advantage and prepare ourselves. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of our discussion. Thank you very much once again, Mr. Alan Johnson and Burosita Ulisinaga for joining us with this as our guests, our honorable guest speakers. And we do hope that this discussion has helped us gain even more knowledge and insights and especially prepares us as accountants in our profession in the future. Let us join back to our main session. Kamonika, the floor is yours. Thank you.